Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Billiard Network, the home of Global Pool on YouTube. My name is Imran Majid, a.k.a. the Maharaja, and I'm going to be hosting today's final. And we have Darren Appleton, the Dynamite, against the eagle-eyed Jason Shaw in the GB9 final. This was the Paul Medati trophy played a couple of weeks ago here in the UK. And we are going to go straight into rack number two. Um, there seems to be a little bit of a problem with rack number one, but nevertheless, we catch a glimpse of Jason potting the nine in rack number one. It's a race to 11 with the nine ball on the spot and alternate break. So we go straight into rack number two, Darren Appleton to break. Adopting a cut break with the nine ball on the spot. The best way to pot a ball is to use a cut break. And Darren did that successfully there. Although the table's a little bit untidy, just like my bedroom. But um, if anyone can, Darren can. It looks like he could pot this one in the corner and slide over two rails with a little bit of outside English and have a shot on the two. That looks like it's possible to me. But yes, yeah, seems like uh, maybe a bad rack even with the template. Uh, sometimes there can be gaps still using a template. Played that nicely. Does have a shot on the two. Needs to find a pocket for that grey six ball, which is next to the nine. He played it that way, so he has a nice little angle to get onto the four ball. Center table position is always your best friend. So Darren's just having a look to see if the six does actually pass into the corner. It might be quite tight because he's double checking. Maybe just snicks in. So two rails across the table, some outside English, three o'clock on the cue ball, a little bounce. Maybe his uh, plan of attack is to pop the four and snooker Jason behind the nine ball, just where he's pointing the cue, a little stun shot. If he gets a nice snooker, he'd be favourite to win this rack. There you go. Jason's wedged behind the nine ball. So, probably got to change the angle of this kick shot with some right hand spin. Made a good hit there. And a pretty good leave. He'll take that. This is called the Paul Medati Trophy in remembrance of a player called Paul Medati who used to frequent the GB9. Unfortunately, passed away a few years ago. So we have this tournament in remembrance. Was a great player and great guy. May he rest in peace. Uh, 
Okay, Darren plays the separation shot. Tried to get a snooker. I'm not sure, but I think Dave Jason can uh, catch a piece of this six ball and put Darren back in a similar position. Okay, contains the situation. I don't think Darren can see all of the six ball. Well, he could see most of it. Nevertheless, a nice shot. It's always a good idea to get your object ball safe before the cue ball when playing safeties. If you do get your cue ball safe as well, it's uh, an added bonus. But your main priority should be to get your object ball safe. Jason faced with a one rail kick now. Wants to try and stop the cue ball and send the six ball down the table. He's dressing up with a bit of right English. And he caught that all wrong. Caught it way too fat and presents Dynamite Darren with a lovely chance to level the scores here. I played in this tournament myself a couple of weeks ago. It was just nice to be back and playing tournaments again. It was almost like the, the pool didn't matter and we were just glad to be there and uh, back out of lockdown. Pretty straightforward nine for Daryl to equalize. Darren sinks to nine. The score is 1 1. It is a race to 11. Grab yourself a cup of tea. Rack number three. Jason Shaw to break. He's going to cut these balls. That's a dry break. No balls down. Lucky for Jason, he hasn't left Darren a shot on the one ball, so Darren may elect to push out. Darren, one of the most decorated players in the world actually, has won uh, everything and anything under the sun with uh, some great titles to his name. Uh, world Championship 9 ball, World Championship 10 ball, um, US Open and uh, the list goes on. That's a weak safety shot by Jason. Wanted his cue ball further down table towards the two or the three. Left Darren a shot here. Used a little bit of inside English there to straighten up the cue ball and get lovely position on the two. So the key shot to the rack here would be three to four. Needs a nice half ball angle here. So you can play two rail position and play the four in the top left hand pocket. Probably five o'clock on the cue ball here. That'll do. Center ball striking. Play the five in the same pocket. Darren did have a little bit of a slump a little while ago, but looks to be playing a bit better now. Yeah, he was faced with some uh, personal problems which uh, affected his uh, game and uh, looks to be, be, be in a better place now. 
seems to be playing better. Not great, not how he used to play, but just a little bit better. At least he's running racks. And as you see, his cue ball control is top notch. Dynamite goes up 2 1. Rack number four, Darren to break. His aim will be to make the one in the side, which he has, and the corner ball. A lovely break. Now the three ball is next to the eight, and uh, there's no way he can miss the eight ball when potting the three. So let's see what he'll do. He might have to put a little bit of a stroke on this because he needs to get on the left-hand side of the table. Not too much of a stroke, just a, a gentle draw. Okay, and in doing so, he forgot to pot the three. But, uh, wow, that's a stroke of luck there. Snookering, Jason. It's part of the game. Nature of the beast. Jason faced with a two-rail kick. And I fancy him to get this. At least hit the ball. Oh, he didn't. Wasn't far away. Presents Darren here with a nice chance. I would play it between the gap, the six and seven, so it takes the other balls out the equation and you can float around two rails. He was just having a look at that himself. Yes, yeah, a straight draw. This little cut shot here would give him prime position. His cue ball will be floating into the line of the shot. Outside English, probably one o'clock on the cue ball there. Maybe two o'clock. Nice speed control. Bottom left on the cue ball, seven o'clock. Now he has options once potting the seven, play it in the corner or the side pocket. Darren Appleton, 3-1 up against Jason Shaw. Rack number five, Jason to break. It's 3-1 down. And a nice break, lost the cue ball there. And, oh, nearly, nearly scratched there. And uh, if he did, it probably would have been 4-1. So uh, another stroke of luck there for Jason. So Jason pushes out. You've got to say, in these type of exchanges, uh, Darren is probably the favorite in uh, safety exchanges and uh, kicking battles. Um, yeah, he does, he does those things better than Jason, um, as a lot of you will know. But Jason can just... Uh, uh, with his firepower, just um, outshoot Darren or maybe anyone in the world. Uh, that's why he's so dangerous. Because uh, he's a shot maker. At the end of the day, you got to pot the balls, right? Jason faced with a two-rail kick here. One, two. 
caught it from behind, lovely speed control on that kick, and caught the one ball absolutely perfect. He'll be delighted with that shot. Uh, there's no point Darren jumping. What are you going to do with a jump shot? Probably kick it. Um, I would kick the ball. There's not too many places to hide, so might have to get a little bit lucky here. Sometimes there's nothing much you can do when playing a kick shot, and you just have to um, hit it and hope for the best. Sometimes they say, if in doubt, give it a clout. Jason trying a cross prank there, which laid absolutely perfectly, and he's played that very well. Can you see how he's played a two-way two shot? If he had missed the one, Darren would have been snookered. So Jason played the safety because he could pot the two, but he couldn't get position on the three. So that was a... Uh, a smart move. See, Jason, when he first started his career, would never refuse a pot. But now he's matured and has learned the ropes of the game, the little intricacies. Um, obviously, residing in America and playing um, all those tournaments. And uh, his all-round game is much better than it what it used to be. Still a great shot maker though, and always will be, I reckon. Darren fails to make contact, gives up ball in hand. He'll be disappointed with that, should have made contact. It's very rare that you see Darren miss the ball completely, but he does, as we all do. Just some people do it more than others. So Cube was slightly going away from the four ball. Might elect to go around the table, just under the eight ball. Yeah, like that. That laid pretty natural. Bottom left on the cue ball, 7 o'clock. Uh, looks like he can draw this back. Center table should be fine. And looks like he's got a, just a one rail positional shot here. No point playing two or three rails when you don't need to. Used a little bit of right hand English to track towards the eight and a fairly elementary stop shot. Eagle Eye re reduces the deficit three two now. Rack number six, Darren to break, currently up 3 2. A little bit of right hand English here, cuts the balls, makes the one in the side, and ooh, oh no, he scratched. Uh, yeah, it was a good, good break as well. It's given ball in hand again to Jason. Can't give Jason too many ball in hands. He's going to run right over you. Anyway, he's just working out how to get on the four ball. It's a little bit tricky because uh, the eight does come into play. He 
He's just checking. Where can I pot the... How can I pot the three ball and miss the eight ball? Don't know, to me, it looks like he can just about get straight in. Straight in on the three and draw back one or two rails for the four. Yeah, I think that's what he's going to do. This was probably the only way he could get position, actually. The four. So, bottom right on the cue ball. Wants a little bit of spin. Not enough right, but uh, that will do. Um, if I know Jason, he'll stun round using two rails, play the five in the same pocket. Yep. Yeah, I know Jason's game pretty well. When he first started playing American Pool, he uh, he frequented the GB Nine Ball Tour, and we could see he was a good talent then. Um, was very raw though. Was very uh, was a great shot maker, like I said, and always will be. But um, his cue ball was everywhere, you know. But just kept on potting the boards, and now he's. Uh, Turned into a different beast. Very seasoned now. So he used some bottom left to get closer to the eight ball. Um, looks like he's got a bit of angle. So I would play this one rail because the, the cushions can be a little bit lively. And the cue ball can sometimes get away from you on uh, a table with a new cloth. Perfect position anyway. Ties the match up. 3-3. Three, three. Rack number 7. It's all square. And it's Jason to break. Crunching break. Makes the 1 in the side. The corner ball. And has got a shot on the 2 in the side. Lovely break. Best break of the match so far. This is like connect the dots. Um, the hardest shot I would see here is probably seven to nine, but um, you still got to take care of your work. You know, concentrate on your cue ball, and that's what happens. See a little lackadaisical shot, and you can run out of position, and that was the one of the easiest runouts we've seen in this match so far. But um, he put a little bit of a lazy stroke on it. Didn't give it respect. I have noticed over the years, if you if you give the pool table respect, it, it kind of respects you back. So, got no choice but to play safety. He's tracking behind the nine. Does he get there? Yes. Excellent speed control. Yeah, on his penultimate shot, he put way too much draw and side spin on that three ball. So, uh, messed it up, but has got Darren in a bit of bother. Darren going airborne. He usually likes using the rails, but uh, yeah, maybe he can't get two rails behind that four ball. So, electing to jump. Probably has something in mind. Maybe bank the four down here by the six. Or uh, bank in the other pocket by his body language. It uh, looked like that he mishit that ball. And uh, presented Jason with a golden chance to go ahead in this match. One rail position. Used a little bit of check side to straighten the cue ball up. Could have been a little bit closer to this six ball, but uh, as we know, Jason's a, a shooter. It shouldn't be a problem. 
nice position on the seven and just roll forward now with the touch of right hand spin I would say track down towards the right hand side of the table and uh, he plays it absolutely lovely eagle eye 4-3 rack number 8 Darren to break And I was going to say that's a dry break, but he makes the one ball in the corner. Doesn't get a shot on the two. Uh, the break is not being his uh, best buddy at the moment. It's not getting many shots where Jason is. That can be the telling difference sometimes in, uh, in a match. So, Darren, an absolute master at the tactical game. Should be winning these uh, safety exchanges against Jason. Not saying Jason's a bad safety player. He's very good as well, but Darren's just a cut above. So, electing to snooker Jason, or can Jason see a part of the two? I can catch a piece of it. That was quite nice. That was a pretty good attempt from that position. Found the gap between the four and five nicely for the cue ball. And uh, now Darren does have a shot on this two ball. Not easy. It's got to bear down on this. Yeah, the corner pocket's in the way, so he's trying to get his uh, bridge hand comfortable. And... Uh, Played it on the pro side. If you're going to miss a ball, you should always overcut it because it goes safe like that. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, wasn't great queuing from where he was. Uh, he didn't have uh, a steady bridge, I think. That's why he was uh, far away from the making that two ball. See, that's uh, a bad safety. You would have thought he would have snookered Darren behind one of the, those balls over there. He had three balls to hide behind. Um, let's see what Darren's going to do here. Yeah, I didn't think he had too many options there. Uh, could have played that a little bit better, but um, that's all he could do, really. Jason should have him in trouble now. Thin snake and go up behind the eight, or um, by the eight. He does have a kick shot. Yeah, nicely done. Nice speed control. He's always going to leave Darren a kick shot. Okay, so two rails here for Darren. Usually pretty good at those. 
Uh, didn't hit that one any good. Presents Jason with a nice chance here. Yeah, the GB Nine Ball Tour is a, a great national tour, probably the best national tour in the world. And uh, I do recommend if you ever come to the UK to sign up to one of our events and you'll see the um, uh, magnitude of uh, our events, laptop scoring, referees, uh, lovely venues, good equipment. And uh, yeah, it's been going successfully for many years now and is getting better and better every event. So I do recommend it, even if you travel over here for one weekend, go to uh, gb9balltour.com and check out their calendar. I think we've got one coming up in uh, September, end of September, or middle of September. Okay, he played it like that because if he played low on the three, just one rail and hit it slowly, the six and eight would have come into play. So he wanted to take them out of the equation. And like this, he misses all the traffic and can float round two rails. A little bit of right hand spin. A nice position on the four. That'll do. That wiped its feet. Lucky it's a new cloth, otherwise that would have stayed up. Now it wants to maintain the angle from the seven to get to the eight. So, oh, I got the colors wrong there. <laughs> They are a little bit perplexing, these colours. I don't know why they keep on changing the colours of the balls, but um, it is what it is. Okay, so probably some high right on the cue ball here, maybe one o'clock, and float round two, three rails. One, two, three, and he caught the four one, but he missed the ball. Yeah, didn't cue that nicely, Jason. Seemed a bit, a little bit hurried or rushed. Was twirling his cue about for some reason. Um, yeah, not one of his best strokes. Slight swerve here for Darren. Oh, wow. And missed, hit the ball and uh, didn't pot it. That's pretty amazing. You would have thought any contact on that seven, the seven would drop. Okay, two rail position here with some bottom right hand spin. You hit that rail first to get nicely on the eight. Eagle eyes up 5-3. Jason to break, rack number 9. Crunches them. Made the corner ball. Has he got a shot on the 1? No. He does have a kick shot, mind you. He could hit the rail first by the 1 and send the one down the table, snookering Darren behind the eight. That looks very possible to me. The only problem is he's got to find the right direction of the one ball. He doesn't want the one to hit the, the five or the six, so he walks around to have a look. Where can I hit the one ball? Yeah, right there, missing all the traffic. Missed all the traffic, but un 
unfortunately caught the three ball on the other end of the table and has left Darren a shot here. He could slow roll this and play the two in the same pocket, almost like a two-way shot. Well, it is a two-way shot. If he misses the one, he'll have cover. So these are shots we should always try and identify. Nicely done. Played that perfect. Yeah, all the two, all the top players are good at their two-way shots and three-way shots. That's what makes them so hard to beat. So stun into the okay, didn't stun into the rail. He's going forward with high right. One rail position, just a high ball. One rail position again. I would probably play just right of center table here so I can float round two rails, play the eight in the corner. The cue ball will miss the nine. Or I think try, Darren tried to get the angle going into the long rail and uh, by the looks of it just got there. Okay, he's playing high right again, so he has got a little angle, but not much. That'll work. Stop shot. Darren Upton, 5-4. He's knocking on the door. Rack number 10. Darren to break. Bottom right on the cue ball. Tried to make the one in the side. Has he made any ball? He's made the two ball. And has got a nice shot on the one ball. Good break. Kelly Fisher played in this tournament as well and we do have a, a video on our uh, Billiard Network channel of Jason versus Kelly so check that out if you get a chance. It's like Darren's going down table trying to find a gap and He's got a little bump on the three. Not ideal, but it does go past the eight. And he could stun over to the long rail and play the four in the corner. So a little bit of right hand spin, probably three o'clock on the cue ball. Oh, that was smart thinking. See how he played it into the long rail a little bit? He knows it's a new cloth and pretty generous pockets, so he played it into the long rail a little bit. Increased his margin to pot the ball. So, straight top, play the five in the same pocket. Uh, seven o'clock on the cue ball, get closer to the six. Ideally, want it to be straight in, um, but that would do. And stun over, play the seven in the same pocket. Yep. Yeah. 
see, it just becomes a little bit difficult now. If he was straight in on the six, he could play a stop shot and the seven in the opposite pocket. Now he has to play Litz with a little bit of... In, and there you have it. Missed the ball. One little positional error. And he missed the ball because it, it made it a lot more difficult playing that seven with inside spin instead of, you know, a much easier shot. So, high right on the cue ball here. Jason elected to go round the table. Pretty good cue ball. Is near the rail, so it's probably going to have to shoot the nine from near the rail. Yeah. That's pretty much frozen. Got to stay down on this one. Trust your technique, no head movement. Straight into the heart of the pocket. Eagle Eye doesn't miss them. Rack number 11, Jason to break. Up 6-4. Made the corner ball. And ooh, uh, not a very good shot, Jason. <laughs> Just showing some hand gestures there. Why did the four ball come and spoil the party? I was having a nice party and you came and messed it all up. Stupid four ball. So, it's going to have to uh, play a push out. Can't see him kicking at this ball. Where do you kick to? Yeah, he's probably going to play a push out. I didn't like that shot very much. Because it looks like the one goes past the two, and he's giving Darren a free shot. I may be wrong, it may not go past uh, the seven ball. Does, Darren does have safety options. Looks like he's playing with high right. And there you have it. It did pot. So, uh, bad push out by Jason. And he developed the cluster. And that was a uh, great shot by Darren. Darren going for his extension. It's a little bit of a tricky angle on this two ball. We float round, play the three in the opposite pocket. Okay, he played something completely different. Um, but I see the logic behind it. If he did go by the three and play it into the corner, maybe he was thinking about the traffic on the right-hand side of the table. I'm not sure, but it was a good, effective shot, actually. And it, it kind of simplified things. We can never question Darren Appleton's strategy or thinking. Whoops, 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 whoops. He doesn't like it. And he's behind the eight. Dreaded eight. Oh, and he slapped his cue on the table. Naughty, naughty. But uh, it's only fair to let a little bit of frustration out there. Darren uh, is known to uh, hitting the table with his cue. Sometimes in matches. Um... A lot more so back in the day when he had a, a bad temper, temperament, but uh, it's improved now. I've actually seen him throw balls across the table and stuff, but uh, that was back in the day. Uh, all that stuff is under the carpet now. At most, you'll get a, a smack on the table with the cue. Faced with a one-rail kick now. Close. Oh, just missed it. Just missed it. A 
that all came down to a bad positional shot where he came behind the eight and uh, that was due to speed control. One rail position. And uh, easy eight ball and nine ball. Takes Jason three racks up, seven four. Rack number 12, Darren to break. He's got to put those mistakes out of his head. And it was a nice break. Made the corner ball and controlled the one ball perfectly. And his cue ball. This is one of Darren's best breaks. Key shot here would be from six to seven. When I break a rack, I always look for a key shot. And then, uh, once you solve the problem, everything should be plain sailing. Bottom left on the cue ball, get closer. There you see the spin taking effect. Uh, could go forward or stop right there. Stop right there was the favorite choice. And now he can just float one rail into the middle of the table. Yep, use a little bit of English to get very nice shape. Okay, I'll probably play this in the corner now. And nicely done. Good break and run. 7-5. He's staying alive. Rack number 13, Jason Shaw to break. A lot of power in that break, lost the cue ball, but does have a shot on the one. Pretty nice shot and it looks like he can just miss the six ball, he can just miss the traffic there, the six and nine. Yeah, that's what I thought, and that puts him in prime position now to run out this rack. He did, did have a similar rack last time where he messed it up, but uh, I'm sure he'll bear down and uh, run these out. Whoops. And just as I said it, commentator's curse. He snookers himself. Uh, there was no need for that, really. It was, uh, i got to say, careless again. Going airborne. Should be pretty close to making this, if not make it. 
See how he was queuing over the cue ball there to give a reference for his potting point. Nearly made the four ball. It was a good attempt. A little bit lucky how he's landed there, you see, because, uh, okay, Darren can pot the four ball, but it doesn't afford any position on the five. So, um, I don't see an easy safety either. Yeah, that's the best you can do, Darren, if you do make the four ball. Okay, pretty good effort. Was uh, was a tough shot. I have to have have to say, Jason was a bit fortunate there. Yeah. Looks like this four ball does go past the eight. Oh, just about caught the long rail there. Quite a lot of the long rail as well. Um. Jason obviously not firing on all cylinders. Good thing about this shot, you can just stun into the nine and have natural position on the seven in the side. You might be even close to making the nine. Oh wow, just as I thought, made the nine ball two. Rack number 14. Darren to break. Trailing 8-5. And that's a dry break. Nothing down. Looked like to me he cut those balls too much there. Okay, we've had some scrappy racks, even on some roadmap finishes where the, the players should run out. They haven't always run out, and uh, I've got to put that down to not playing pool for so long, or competitive pool at least, in competition. Everyone's been at home in lockdown, so uh, that's probably the reason why everyone's not... Uh, at the top of their game. Okay, Jason missed that one ball, but left Darren really horrible. Darren's just going around to see if he can uh, manufacture the cue ball through the gap four and nine to get shape on the two. And, uh, he has to use all this fishing tackle to get to the one. Darren is a fisherman, as uh, some of you may know. So, attempted the gap, but uh, no cigar. Um, there is a problem up table, seven and eight ball, which are in a cluster. So looking at that, Darren might actually attempt to bank this ball past the four ball. I don't see any other easy safety. Because that 7-8 cluster is like your uh, insurance policy. And there you go. Great minds. Unfortunately, looks like he's landed very straight on the three. Does look like it to me. Yeah, he might have to play short side position.
Okay, he's a little bit short. I think Darren's having a look at potting the four and cannoning into the seven, eight, and hoping to have a shot on the five. It would open up the rack. He's going for it. He's, he's putting some a little bit of right on this. And wow, what a great shot. That's dynamite right there. That is the shot of the match so far. Absolutely fantastic line and direction of the cue ball. And played that to an absolute T. Well done, Darren. Sets up this knack rack nicely. And that should spur him on. It's only 8-6 if he runs out here. And that should give him a, a lot of confidence, actually. Moving forward in this match. Was uh, very well executed to break out the 7-8. Awesome shot by that Darren, and fully deserves to take down this rack. And there you have it. It's 8-6. He's still in the mix. Rack number 15, Eagle Eye to break. Currently up 8-6. Six, six. Has made the corner ball, and no cigar on the one. Oh, it was actually a non-compliant break. Didn't make the three points, so elects to put Jason back in. Jason is going to push out. Jason elects to push out, giving Darren a piece of the one ball. If I was to bet, I'd say Darren snookers him here. He's got a nice little place behind the seven here. Six, sorry. Yeah, and he could uh, use the five and nine as blockers. It's a nice shot. Jason's probably going to jump this. I don't see how else he can get to the ball. Viv Rusko, the head referee, doing a great job in the final. Well done, Viv. Oh, can he see this ball? Okay, he could catch a piece of the one. And he's left down a shot. Not easy, mind you. His cue ball is on the rail. But uh, should get close to this. Okay. Uh, missed it by quite some margin. It's got a nice leave though, deserves a bit of luck, Jason's had most of it so far, um, I don't think it cuts in the side, mm, decisions, decisions, bit of a 
problem here. Can't play it in the corner, it's going to scratch. So, okay, yeah, I was going to suggest something like that, snooker behind the seven. That's what he attempted, and send the one ball down table into traffic. Okay, he's left Darren another nice safety shot here. Can wedge him up behind the two, and he did that perfectly. Jason's going to kick at this, one rail, he should hit the ball this time, <laughs> well he should be close to making it really, at this level, and he makes it, nice shot. Ooh, does that go past, it's very tight. I'm not sure. Oh, flew in. You could fit a bus through there. Slightly hampered with the six ball. Now can just play some high right, maybe one o'clock on the cue ball, and go two rails behind that seven ball, or position on the five. Okay, his angle seems to be a bit funny. Seems to be going into the nine, so can uh, just bump into the nine and play a cut shot. Or he can draw back. I don't like that. Uh, maybe, maybe follow. Maybe follow and use some English to straighten up the cue ball off this short rail. Oh, he played it with inside spin. And, uh, okay, each to their own. Everybody has their own cup of tea. Maybe he thought if I go into the six, I'll get some kind of shot. Uh, doesn't look like it goes past the eight ball. So it has to work out a safety. see what he does. Oh, that was a nice shot, yeah. See, the speed of his object ball was spot on there, trying to use the 8 and 9 as blockers, or the 9 ball at least. And uh, it looks like he's got Darren. If Darren can see a piece, it's uh, like the paint of it. So uh, Jason's speed on that six ball was excellent. Can't go two rails because the seven's in the way. He's, yeah, he could catch a piece of it. Okay, that's about the best he could do. He's left diff distance at least. Not much Darren could do there. And uh, I've got to say, if Jason's in stroke, his normal self, this would not be a problem at all. And it wasn't a problem at all. And uh, just to show off a little bit, he draws all the way down the table for lovely position on the seven. Can just draw this back to where he's standing on the long rail. That'll do. Uh, play the nine in the same pocket. Stun the cue ball across, centre ball striking, and a little bit short of position. The line and direction of the cue ball wasn't great either, but uh, like we said before, he's a shot maker, doesn't miss much. There we have it, 9-6 to the eagle eye. Darren needs to pull his socks up, rack number 16, and he's breaking. Darren having problems with the break now, has had a couple of dry ones. And uh, it's a little bit of a messy rack. Four and seven are clustered up together, three and six. 
So a little bit of work to do in this rack if he is going to run out. Used high right on the cue ball there. Maintain position for the two ball. Now it'd be interesting to see what he does. He could draw into these using one rail with bottom left on the cue ball. Seven, seven o'clock striking on the cue ball. Could elect to develop the three and six. I don't see what else he could do. And that's exactly what he's done. And that was a little bit unlucky. Good attempt. Jason getting down very quickly. What does he see? Okay, snooker behind the five ball. Yep. Nicely done. So, Jason's in a pretty commanding position right now. 9-6 up and has got Darren snookered. Darren does have a one rail escape. Needs good direction on this three ball now. Needs to get it to the bottom rail. Got it to the bottom rail, but too hard, and the direction of the three wasn't great either. He wanted it more to the right over behind the eight and nine. So you got to put down that down as a little mistake from Darren. Okay, four ball. That's the problem now. Um, he could just float this in, play cue ball to the sh bottom rail, have a shot on the four in the top corner pocket. Oh, way over stroke that. He's he's partially snookered himself. So, uh, yet another unforced error. Yeah, I mean, if he lagged his cue ball to the bottom rail, he would have had some sort of shot in the top pocket on the four. Uh, probably tried to get a bit cute with the position there. Can sometimes be your downfall. Plays, tries to get behind the six. Uh, fails that. Uh, Darren's got a shot here. Not easy. Some low left spin and use two rails to get back to your five. He wants to shoot the five in the pocket where he's standing. So bottom left. Oh, missed the ball. Yeah, some uh, misses coming in now from Darren. It has been a long day. Um, players start playing their matches 9 or 10 a.m. And it's uh, like uh, 6 o'clock in the evening at this final. So they've been playing all day. Nice stroke there by Jason. Expected him to get that. He can almost smell the winning line. Yeah, this is connect the dots. This will actually put Jason on the hill. It's a race to 11. Just bounce off the rail. Yeah, we still got to give these balls respect. We've seen what can happen when you're careless on a pool table. That's absolutely perfect. Jason Shaw on the hill, 10-6, but Darren's still in the mix. Rack number 17, Jason to break, is on the hill. And what a lovely break. The eagle eye looking to swoop down and catch his prey. At the GB Nine Ball Tour final, the score is currently 10 6. Oh, he tries to force that ball and misses it. And it's left a shot for Darren. Darren's hampered with the five ball again. Uh, yeah, you gotta say Jason's had the best of the rolls in this particular match.
this is quite an ugly shot if you're going to try and attempt it. If you are going to attempt the pot, I would suggest to overcut the one ball. So if you do miss, it will go safe. Um, he does have a stop shot safety behind the, the six. Send the one down behind the three, nine, somewhere there. That's the shot I like. You're uh, hampered trying to pot this ball, so very easy to get un unintentional English on the ball, and that's why he very intelligently played my shot. And has left a shot here for Eagle Eye. Looks to be uh, in a bit of better stroke now. Has made some good shots towards the latter part of this match. He's just working out position for his cue ball now. He can miss the nine. A natural tangent of the cue ball will miss the nine. And with a little bit of spin would track towards the five. Doesn't want to get snookered behind that five ball. It's a big ball. It's a big ball. Ooh, lucky. I think he can just see it. Oh, yeah, he can see it. No problem at all. No problem at all. Yeah, and uh, looks like he's got four more balls to win this match. I would play over to where he's standing. A little bit of high left on the cue ball. Yeah, nicely down. You want the cue ball to bounce off the rail. Perfect. And the eagle eye actually does swoop into the UK and steal the GB9 Paul Madati Trophy with a scoreline of 11-6 over Darren Appleton. It's been, um, I wouldn't say the greatest standard of matches, but, um, you know, a win is a win. But thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned to the Billiard Network for more action from across the globe. And I'm Imran Majid signing out and saying ciao for now.